Imagine you are the marketing manager. You have been given 80k to spend on YouTube, Facebook and newspaper. In what combination will you use those marketing spends such that you get maximum sales? In such scenarios, you use a multiple linear regression. But before we build that model, hey, my name is Kunal Naik. I'm the founder of Data Science Masterminds and I'm on a mission to help you learn and apply data science effectively to grow in your career. So before we dive into it, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification such that you get notified whenever I release a new video for you. As a marketing manager, I've already run so many different campaigns and I have some data with me, which is basically the YouTube, Facebook and newspaper spends and how much in the past they have generated sales. So we're going to use these three spends to build a model such that we can predict sales. For that, we're going to use a multiple linear regression and we're going to do this using the data analysis tool pack within Excel. Now, if you don't have that tool pack, you can go to file, say options. It should load up a window such as this and you can go to the add in section here and click on manage Excel admins. Say so go and check the analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack VBA and say OK. To know if you have done it correctly, you can go to the data tab and click on data analysis and it should load up this particular window. This way you'll be able to perform regression with the data analysis tool pack on Excel. So let's go to the campaigns page and uh, we're going to open up the data analysis tool pack and select regression from this particular list. So this should be it. Say OK. And we're going to provide Y first. That is going to be sales. So you can provide it with the column name included and you can hold down control shift down to select this entire column. Then you, you can select one of the cells and say control up, not control shift up. It will take you to this place where we are on the top. And now I can select this and say shift once, twice, and then control shift down to select all of these three rows. I can select on labels and I can leave everything else out. I'm going to select output and I'm going to choose this using data analysis A1 cell here and say OK. What this will do is it will build a model for us and it will provide us the coefficients for the equation that we are trying to build for this case, right? So this is the equation coefficients that it's going to give us. And I've already taken the values from here and populated it here by saying something like this. I'll say equal to, and I'm going to take the intercept here. Similarly, I'm going to say equal to, take the coefficient for YouTube here, and I continue to do the same here. Or you could just do transpose of these values and you should be getting these values of the coefficients here. But before we write the equation, we need to look at some stats so that so that we know we are doing the right thing to build this equation or statistically right to build this equation. So for that, we're going to go and first look at the R squared here. The R squared tells us how well we are able to explain sales using YouTube, Facebook and newspaper. And we're able to do it at a 89% level. For now, this looks good. Apart from that, you then want to check out the coefficients and the p-value for each of these coefficients. Now, turns out that YouTube and Facebook are significant for us since the p-value is less than 0.05. Newspaper does not seem to be as significant as we wanted for this particular model. And it should be visible in how less that, conf that coefficient contributes to the sales, right? So this is a negative one and it typically in a sales environment or a marketing environment, no marketing channel will give a negative return, right? So that's why maybe this is not a right feature for us to use in this equation. However, we're just going to continue and not rebuild the model. We're just going to use all of them. Typically, you want to ensure that this coefficient is positive. And so now we are ready to build the equation that is the predicted sales. And so how do we do that? The first way to do it is you say equal to and you're going to say coefficient that is this is plus then you can say d 
the coefficient of YouTube. I'm going to fix that into the YouTube spreads plus coefficient of Facebook. Fix that into Facebook plus coefficient of newspaper F4 into newspaper and say enter. Now this formula takes it's tedious to write. You can easily make mistakes. So instead of this, we can easily replace it with some product that will be much more easier for us to do it. So I'm just going to select all of this here, fix it, comma and some product of these. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that all of the coefficients and the columns should be in the same order that we will be doing the right thing. So fortunately, I've already placed the coefficients and the columns in the same order. So that will work for us. We say enter and I'm going to get the same result. That's what the predicted sales will be getting. Right now, it will not be always true that sales that we the actual sales that we have is going to exactly match the predicted sales. And so there should be a way for us to know how well we predicted sales. So we're going to check how we do that by introducing some me metrics that we can measure the performance with. To measure the performance, I have created a sheet called performance and I've taken the sales and predicted sales in this particular sheet here. So I have sales actual and sales predicted. And now the first thing that we can do is to compare the errors, right? We'll begin by taking this difference between sales actual and sales predicted, and it should give us a sense of how far off or how close we are to the predictions. So I'm just going to take this one and say minus the predicted value. And if you can see the error are small, right? So if I just, you know, sum this up, I should be able to say how well I'm doing as a performance, right? But you'll notice that if I sum this up, it's almost going to be zero. And uh, if you notice, if I just, you know, just take the exact sales that I have and paste it here, you'll see I'll get zero error. So typically, if there is no error, I should be getting zero. However, in this scenario, I'm getting zero here, right? Which is, which means that there's something wrong here and I'm not able to exactly paint the right picture here because I'm getting zero, which I should not be getting because I know there are some errors here, right? Now this happens because we have some pluses and minus because of the error. Some may be above it, some may be below it. And so they all add up to zero and which is why we are not able to, you know, get a summary function that tells us how good we are or how good this particular model is. So then what we can do, we can then take the absolute of the error and uh, this will give us some sense of where and this will remove the sign and now we can sum it up and we should be able to tell how much error we have. So if I just sum that up, I'll basically get a 300 which is not going to be a representative or we, we can use this value. Uh, it should ha happen that, you know, this should tend to basically lower value to for us to know whether our model is good or not. So then when if absolute, but in reality, absolute error is not used as much. What we use, we end up using is uh, a sum of squared errors or a mean of squared errors. So instead of taking the absolute error, we square these values. So it does the same thing and um, it, it just uh, gives us, you know, the values without the sign. So it will be something like this. I'll just take the error here and I will square this, which will give me the squared error here. Now, this is something that as an industry we use to get how accurate or how good our performance is. And so we can do that by saying, hey, sum of squared is going to be sum of all of these values. Right? Say, okay. It's going to be sum of all of these values. So it's not exactly 300. It's around 800 that we see. And so naturally, this is the best model that the regression equation built. And... Uh, 
it is designed to give you the lowest value however there is you know if you remove the this particular column newspaper and you know check the performance this might be somewhat better the the, the point here is that this should be lower or you know nearer to zero to tell whether or not this is a good model similarly we can do mean square error so it's going to be average of all of these square errors that we have and that's going to be four again it should tend to zero for us to get the best model then we can do root mean squared error which is going to be just this particular value to the power of 1 by 2 which is 2 again since you know sum of squared errors and uh, mse sse and msc can become large values root just gives us a much more better now you know number to look at by just taking the root of it because we can we are taking square so naturally we can take a root to to have a representative number and last but not least again this is more a case for arima we use it but nonetheless you know you will come across map also which is mean absolute percentage error which is going to be the value the how much error we made the absolute error divided by the actual sales and so you'll get a percentage and if you can just take average of this percentages will get an error percentage so on an average we made predictions which were 14 percent wrong right so or 80 86 percent accurate so these are some of the measures that we use typically this is a case that is used for EMA the rest of the cases are used for regression equations and they should tend towards zero for you to get the better model so there you go guys this is how you do regression equation using the data analysis tool pack in excel so we built the model and we checked the accuracy of the model and now it's time to answer the marketing manager's question so i'm going to go back to the contact sheet here and we are going to help him now understand which of these spends mix he should be using to get the maximum sales for that I've already taken the intercepts or the coefficients from the model from this place or this place and now I'm going to write the same equation that I wrote here to help this marketing manager take this 80k mix and see which of these combinations will give him maximum sales. So we'll begin by writing is equal to here and I'm going to say it's intercept f4 plus some product of these values which i'll fix and then i will take these values here so close the bracket i'm not going to fix the second one here because i need to copy it down select all of these four cells and say Control d and as you can see now i have an indication for the marketing manager of what kind of sales i'm likely to expect if i spend the same 80k in this mix and so if you see here the maximum that I can get is 18 and I put everything in the Facebook ads. Similarly, I can just put everything in, let's say YouTube and expect some result. I'm not getting that, right? So choosing one particular channel is not advisable. It, it will give a maximum number based on whichever coefficient is higher, right? So you'll see 0.18, the coefficient is higher, hence it's giving a higher sales return but we know that this is not a real world possibility right so we'll have to do a mix and so these three cases are the mix that we have and looks like spending on facebook ads spending on youtube 15k on youtube 50k on facebook ads and newspaper is going to give some maximum returns here so this is how the marketing manager will know what marketing mix to use to get maximum sales now this is only a very microscopic of how we use this to get sales however there are a lot of other factors that play into it and we still need to factor all of that however this is an intuitive example for you to know how to use linear regression to solve business problems such as this our journey is not yet over in the next video we're going to look at the same model but with a different technique and doing some transformations on the data to see if we can improve the coefficients, improve the accuracy, improve the R-square and build a better model to help this marketing manager. 
more on that in the next video